Festival at Blossom in July. I will have tickets for you today before we get out of here. About a half an hour from now for that show. Willie Nelson's Easy Top, Government Mule. Another $1,000 for you about 10 minutes from now, 3.30. Another keyword to get you a grand and go fund yourself. Uh, the second of the in a, uh, Guardians doubleheader is supposed to go off around 4.40. So we'll get out of here a couple minutes before that. Right now they're at the top of the sixth and they're tied at three. So that's good. Guardians have come from behind. Padres are a very good team right now. So we'll see what happens. That guy who always just MFs me on social media, just screaming at me when I'm on instead of the ball game. Mm-hmm. How dare you? He wrote me. He basically said, are you on or is the second game going to be on? And I said, second game. And he goes, cool, thanks, dude. Hey, <laughs> let's turn him around. <laughs> you got to kill him with kindness, baby. Kill him with kindness. Somebody tried to kill Dave Chappelle. Saw that. On stage at the Hollywood Bowl. This was the Netflix is a joke festival. And so it's Chappelle, Jamie Foxx is there. There's a, 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 Chris Rock was on the show. Like it was Jimmy Carr, yeah. if you know who he is. Yeah, a lot of people. 130 comics on like it is over the course of 11 days. It's gigantic. Was festival. this the last night? I think so. Okay. And uh, it's Chappelle, towards the end, it was kind of the curtain call, I think. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, give it up for everybody. And some guy runs up. They said the guy had a fake gun on him, but the fake gun had a real knife in it. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) And so if you've seen any of the video, I I haven't seen anything. (laughs) I haven't seen anything, like, super close up. But you can basically... Have you seen that? Well, did you see the one that was... uh, TMZ posted one that you can... I mean, it's still far away. But you can see everything that's happening. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. see. Somebody was filming in, like, the Jumbotron or whatever. And so Jamie Foxx and Buster Rhymes, I guess, run out and help him. But this dude, if you saw photos of them loading this dude in the ambulance, mm. they beat the piss out this guy. His, I guess he's some wannabe rapper. He's some dude who's got a song called Dave Chappelle or something. I don't know. But he's 23. All the photos of him getting loaded, his arms like backwards. It's his elbows pointing forward. Yeah. It's crazy. Let they up. messed him up. I thought he was doing the Nicki Minaj pose like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and then Chris Rock comes out, and of course, what does he say? Was that Will Smith? Was that <laughs> Will Smith? <laughs> Which I think is the first thing he's publicly said attached to uh, the Will Smith Chris Rock incident. Whenever you're in trouble, Jamie Foxx would show up in the sheriff's hat. <laughs> I thought that was part of the show. I don't know what the f*** is. I, I, I grabbed the back of that nigga's head. His hair was spongy. Absorbent. I've been doing this 35 years. I just stomped the nigga backstage. I always wanted to do that. I think Bust around the audience is like, that's how you do it, God. <laughs> so yeah, they dragged the guy backstage and went to work on him. I hate the way that they write articles these days where they're, you know, going through all the the things that are happening and they say, the Robin Hood Men in Tight star was performing at the (laughs) Hollywood Bowl. But that's just goofing, right? I mean, because he's done so many things, that's got to be just like being, trying to be funny. I guess, but it's just like, come on. Don't remind him he was in that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and the Hollywood Bowl, which is no small venue... I, I, and uh, the guy uh, jumps up at the end, and I did think it was something in retaliation to the whole transgender thing. That's honestly the first thing that came to my mind. I'm like, uh oh, since Will Smith did it, now people are going to be like, transgender, trans lives yeah, matter. Yeah, but you and know what? Like, it also really sucks, and it brings into clearer focus just how different this guy was treated than Will Smith. Yeah, this guy got dragged to the backstage and everybody went to work on him. Buster Rhymes and Chappelle and the security guards kicking the hell out of this guy. And, you know, weren't sure they didn't usher him back to his his seat. Will Smith didn't tackle Chris Rock either. Nobody well, assaulted him on right. stage. Yeah, yeah. He assaulted. Well, he didn't come at him with the knife. And they found Smith, something on him and had a knife who in it. Was, and they're like, is this a bit like it? You know, things happen at the Oscars. I know. So. I know. But uh, I mean. But yeah, the photos of this guy <laughs> going into the up, ambulance. Man. He looked like uh, a guy, you know, he looked like uh, a Tyson opponent in the 80s. But why would he think it's a good idea? Like, you're not in your right headspace when you, you spend well, yeah. all that money for. Nobody's up-close thinking tickets. about good ideas anymore. No one's considering this is what it is now. And you know, all these comics would be like, this is what we're, we're worried about. And that's not an un. Uh, it's not an unwarranted. Uh, 
concern. Well, but still, it's like people are just going off the rails now. They're not going, boy, would this be a good idea? They're not doing a cost-benefit analysis on stuff like this. What's more worrisome is when this happens at a place. I mean, first of all, how did he get that fake gun in there? And where's like, the security? Yeah, where's the security? They came out like a split second after that. I do. I mean, the fact that he got up on stage is kind of scary. But, but they, the moment he got up on stage, they were running. But like, but they at, had to chase him too. It's not like they tackled him. Comedy clubs and stuff like that, where people, where there's not really any security, you know, and if someone attacks someone on stage, like, you know, if Mary says something that someone doesn't like, which I can't imagine you doing I've that. I've never done that. Uh, My comedy is 100% approval rate. It's for the people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's a, it's a scary thing to, to think that someone, and any performer, or just any, any person going about their life where people are so worked up and just willing to tightly wound yeah just, just injure somebody and like try and be violent towards somebody got it we need we need uh everybody needs to le- legalize marijuana please <laughs> <laughs> get everybody to chill out well anyway that happened and so they're uh they're talking about that Chappelle attacked shout out to jamie fox by the way jamie whenever you're in trouble Jamie Foxx would show up in the sheriff's hat. I thought that was part of the show. I don't know what the... Listen, I just want to say, man, I've had an incredible time. This man is an absolute genius. We got to make sure we protect him at all times, man. This is what it's about. People forget Jamie Foxx is a stand-up. Yeah. He's pretty good, too. He does everything. Yeah. He's a talented guy. He can sing. He can act. Went to college on a piano scholarship for people who don't think he's a legit musician. Ooh, I had that. My brother had that unpredictable album, that Jamie Foxx album. Is that what it's called? Unpredictable. Unpredictable. Yeah. Here, man. This means everything, man. You're a genius. You're a legend. I enjoyed myself thoroughly, and we're not gonna let nothing happen to you. Everybody, compose yourselves. I wanted this to be a peaceful moment, and I'm sure now it is. <laughs> and now it is. They just tossed that dude into an ambulance. Do you know the capacity of that arena? It's big. Okay. Hollywood Bowl is probably, I don't know, 15,000 people. It's a big venue. 17.5. Wow. Yeah. Out there in the hills. And, uh, yeah, packed house, obviously. That's a pretty neat venue. I mean, just in the middle of the mountains. Yeah, it's great. So they, so they we're getting more info on the guy. He's 23. He's some. I mean, they refer to him as a wannabe rapper, but I'm like, if you're a rapper, you're a rapper. I mean, I assume they mean wannabe successful rapper, but well, that's the goal. Yeah, Isaiah Lee is the guy being held on thirty thousand dollars bail. But yeah, the guy kind of like went to tackle Dave around the waist or something, and then they both fell over, I guess. But Dave kind of got knocked on his heels. I don't know if he went down the whole way. Dave went down. But I don't think he, yeah, like he just kind of got knocked off balance. And what this guy didn't do right is he dove at Dave. You don't want to leave your feet until you make contact because mm-hmm. you want to use your legs to push through. So my other did not question, play football. My other question was, <laughs> how did anyone have a cell phone? Oh, you can break those bags open. Oh, you can. Yeah. Don't they take the bag? No. No. Oh, you, you just have it, the like bag magnetic. with you. I see. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe, I know Chappelle does those yonder bags at his shows. I thought maybe a festival show wasn't doing that. No, they still With did that. With a lineup like that, I mean, you That's what I would to. think, too, yeah. but I didn't know. I was like, yeah, you know. There's always people, and then people sneak. I mean, the guy was able to sneak a fake gun that has yeah. a knife in it. I'm sure someone was able to sneak a cell phone in. Hmm. Knife gun. <laughs> he came at me with a knife gun. Just think a month or two, everybody will have a concealed gun on them legally. Yeah. Alan, I prefer to call Dave Chappelle, former co-star of Con Air. Yeah, that too. (laughs) Yep. The movie, not the hair dryer company. Ah, I was confused. Wasn't he in Blue Streak? said, why would a bald guy be doing hair dryer commercials? He absolutely was in Blue Streak, yeah. 
with um, gay, Martin Lawrence. Gay, yeah. gay. I'm broken. I need money too. <laughs> what? When he's like, uh, he's getting interviewed by the cops or something. In Blue Streak? Yeah. And oh, I don't like, remember the movie. They're, they're stealing diamonds is what they're trying to do. And he's not ratting out Martin Lawrence. But like, they say, I can't remember. All I can tell you like, is that he's gay. Right. They're like, what about your accomplice? Like, all I can tell you is that he was gay. Gay, gay. <laughs> gay. <laughs> Wow. And then what was his character's name in Nutty Professor? Reggie? Reggie something, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think it might have just been Oh, Reggie. wait, the, the yeah. big, like, the cat in the hat yeah. thing or whatever? All yeah, these his movies. underwear pulled, like, way out of the He was the Randy character mm-hmm. of the clumps. Uh, okay, let me give you some money. It's $1,000. It's a chance for you to go fund yourself. So listen closely and good luck. The Buzzard wants you to go fund yourself and score $1,000. Enter the nationwide keyword WIN at WMMS.com. That's WIN. Enter it now at WMMS.com. And good luck from Buzzard Radio. I mentioned it in passing earlier, but I've gotten a lot of very nice messages from people about my today being my 30th anniversary in radio. I started in radio May 4th, 1992. And I've got some exceedingly kind messages from people. And I was going to do, you know, a few months back, I was like, well, this date's coming up. I think of it as a big deal. I'm going to find, like, old uh, audio and things like that. And then I started going through stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> and a lot, and having nothing to do with my skill level, by mm-hmm. the way. My skill level now is pretty much the same. Having to do with content. Mm-hmm. A lot has changed in 30 years. Uh-huh. And the, I have written and produced hundreds of bits over the course of my career. And... I was going through, and the more I went through, I was like, Jesus. I texted a buddy of mine who's also still in radio, and I go, oh, my God, the stuff we used to do. Yeah. That he and I, we didn't work together, but I mean, you know, the stuff that we used to do content-wise, I'm like, I can't error most of these things. Yeah, you'll get fired. (laughs) And so I was listening to some things, and then it occurred to me, too, that it would just be a big deal to me. And not really a big deal to this audience. This audience has only known me for 12 of my 30 years. And so the the length of my career, I'm I'm happy and I'm proud and I'm I'm extraordinarily surprised um, that I'm still doing it. But it occurred to me that all that would have just uh, nobody would really care other than me, because you know the different cities I've worked in, I've had different you know half my career was a solo show, and all the people that I've had working with me along the way. It'd be different if, like, this show had been around for 30 years Mm -hmm. with all of us, right? That would be a whole different thing. But it's just been my show for 30 years. And so I was like, well, that's not really going to – it's not going to hit the way they want it to hit. And it would have been a lot of – and again, like I said, I was going through – you know, I have binders full of discs and some mini discs and some CDRs and there's cassettes – and I was starting to think about this like around Christmas. I was like, well, that would be fun because there's some really old, funny stuff. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, it's really, it would just be for me. That's okay. Not really. I mean, I, I can would si- enjoy it. I, I, think can, we all would I can enjoy sit it. at home and listen to the stuff if I wanted to. But we would like to hear um, it. We like yeah. to hear the evolution of Alan. Yes. The, the, from, you know, the, the inappropriate when you weren't woke. Uh, uh-huh. To who you are now? Yeah. Not, well, I, I understand though it would be a lot of work. Well, it was less that, and the more that just the more I went through things, I was like, well, the things that I think are very, very funny, I simply can't air them. <laughs> and so it's um, and, but I've gotten some very nice messages from people. Mark is uh, a regular. He wrote me a very, very nice letter. He drives. Uh, he's a school teacher. He drives from Green to Parma every day. Ooh, that's a haul. And back, eighty miles. Both ways, um, and so yeah, that's <laughs> that's a that's a big deal. So, um, but yeah, the more I thought about, it, I was like, wow. But it is wild too to consider how much has changed. Not just in kind of the mechanics of this work, but also in in kind of the content. You know, back in the day, if I was producing a bit or something and throwing it on the air and having fun with it. I didn't have to worry that somebody was going to go, somebody already did that on TikTok. Yeah. Because four billion people can have the same kinds of ideas, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of makes it less fun. You know, back in the day, you'd throw something out there on the radio, and people were like, they might hate it, might like it. But you didn't have, um, 
you never had to concern yourself with because I wasn't listening to other radio shows, so it wasn't like oh, I was worried about uh, doing somebody else's bit, or I just didn't care what other people were doing. And so I knew that those things weren't necessarily going to bleed. Or the people that I listened to as a kid that I liked a lot, I was like, well, that's not going to bleed in because it's a completely different kind of thing. But um, 30 years is 30 years. So, it's a long time. It's very, very impressive. Time. It's a really long time. Congratulations. And as a surprise, we have... Some people coming in <laughs> to say, to yeah. show their respects, uh-huh. here's Ray Romano. Hey, Ray Romano's hey, here! You're, it's uh. your 30 years. Oh, we're doing comedy a long time, too. <laughs> Ruth Langmore would also like to say oh, something. Oh, yeah. To you. Oh, Ruth. I love when Ruth Langmore comes by. Alan, uh. I don't like a lot of comedy. I don't like laughing. I'm a very serious person, but I will say that over the last 30 years, even though I'm only 29, I have enjoyed <laughs> listening to your show, and thank God you haven't quit yet. Yeah, but if you do, I understand. Twenty, even though I'm 29, <laughs> we're a couple episodes away from the very end of Ozark, and I we're sitting there last night, and I go, God, I just realized Ruth has always been my least favorite character on really? that show. I think it's so cartoony. I've never her performance, and everybody goes, God, she's so good in the show. I think show. she's amazing, and maybe she is. Just my take on it is, it's so cartoony. The, uh, just. Compared I don't, to everybody else. Yeah, yeah, it's, I don't know, man. It's, I feel like... <sighs> anytime she's talking, it's taken me out of the show. Aw. Because it's like F-bomb, F-bomb, F-bomb. It's I'm like... she is. But nobody really talks like that. So it's like... Mm. Yeah, it's, they do. Mm, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I know. I don't know. People, it, whatever. uneducated it's, people talk like that. Oh, pl- I know plenty of uneducated people. I'm just saying, like, it just takes me out of that show a little bit. So the day that everything happened with the cat, that she peed on the couch and everything was going on, uh, my boyfriend and I stayed in separate parts of the house the entire day. We didn't talk. We were not having You were avoiding each other. So I went in to get something out of my car, and I went into the back room, and I looked. I was so mad he had Ozark on. I was like, are you watching Ozark right now? And he was like, yeah, why? And I was like, what do you mean, yeah, Why? (laughs) I was like, you know, this is one of my favorite. You guys are really shows. sticking it to each other. Well, this was so after, petty. After all the cat stuff, and I was like, how far into this are you? And it was like, it said season four, episode fourteen. And he goes, I think this is like the last episode. And I was like, so you just watched all of them without me? And he was like, I didn't know you wanted to watch it. I was like, I have an entire bit about this movie. So <laughs> Does it mean like, you want to watch it? So it's just one more thing that I think he he knew. I would have been upset about, wow. and so he did it on purpose. And so I, uh, yeah, I was like, after all the cat stuff, this is everything I tried. No one knows how to get Man, a skin yeah. more than your spouse. <laughs> the, the fact that you, you guys, guys are in a mutually though. assured destruction, aren't uh-huh. you? Yeah. yeah. Now I don't know if it was on purpose will be or not. <laughs> Alan's career or Mary's relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was very upset though. Uh, we also have uh, one of our British listeners. Oh yeah. Yeah. British Pound Cake is here to, uh, oh, British to pound congratulate cake. you on 30 years. Uh-huh. I hate the show. <laughs> Congratulations on your 30 years. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. He's very, he's worked on it and oh, he's doing a good job. Oh, good job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, huh. Billiam. <laughs> Ray Romano. Billiam. <laughs> yeah. Everybody likes me. Everyone loves, loves me. me too. Oh, Alan, this is Brittany. I just want to say happy birthday and thank you for the uh, time birthday. you put on it. All, and all. I didn't get you present because I don't make any money. Um, but I want to say that your radio show helps me when I want to cut my nails and when I have to do my hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, so thank you for everything you've done for the community. <laughs> yeah. I love you and uh-huh. uh, this Brittany. Oh, thank you, Brittany. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you, Whitney. That's very sweet. It's not British pound cake sweet, but you know, it's it's okay. Yeah, now there's people giving me Ozark spoilers. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that a lot. Oh, and that's it's cool. Down the screen in front of you. you yeah, I know. I have nothing I can do about that. Dicks like that. It's. A, I don't yeah. think they're trying to be dicks. I think that they're oh. just like you know. But um, do you see Dead to Me is coming back this fall? You like yeah, that show? Yeah, right? I think so. I can't Gwen started watching it, and I started watching it, too, so I was like, oh, yeah, it's okay. It's the last season of it. Yeah, Moon Knight's wrapping up. I like that a lot. Um, what? Else? So many things are starting. I can't wait. So many things are starting. Alan, I'm educated, and I say a lot of F words. 
Yeah, no, listen, uh, for whatever reason, just that character, there's something about it that... Um, is it because she's a woman? I think that's what it you is. You know, I don't like to hear the salty language from the ladies. Right. No. Mm-hmm. Women no, shouldn't speak that way. Hey, man, women shouldn't speak at all <laughs> if you catch them adrift. Seen and not heard them. Yeah! Right. Alan, I cuss like a sailor all the time. I'm a 47-year-old female. Again, classy the, gals out here. The clip that went around, it's not necessarily a spoiler, but the one where Julia Garner, Ruth Langmore, is shouting, if, you're gonna, if you want to mm-hmm. stop me, you're going to have to kill me. Mm-hmm. I When I watched that, I had chills. I had tears in my eyes because it, it felt so real that I was like, if I were in the situation she were in, this is a very real response. That scene, yes. But I think it's more like the bulk of her character is people walking up going... Can I help you? Well, I effing hope you can. I effing think that. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. And it's really, I don't care about the words. I, yeah. th- I don't care at all. It's just that maybe it's the difference between her reaction to other characters and their rea- I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. I just, Something we were watching it. it last night. Yeah. And I was like, man, I just realized. Maybe because the rest of the show is so. Somber. M- some, it's kind of mm-hmm. monotone and, you know. Here's well, and you have Jason Bateman, show. who doesn't he doesn't go one way or the other. Yeah, right. He's just like, yep, yeah, well, we're we're all gonna die yeah. one day. So and that's the guy I identify with. <laughs> right. Marty Bird is my spirit animal, and Riff is mine. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Just a loudmouth redneck telling everyone off. I love hey, it. Hey, man. I love it. Okay, I've got to take a break. I'll have those Outlaw Festival tickets for you after this break. Willie Nelson's Easy Top, Government Mule, and more in July, end of July at Blossom. So if you want to get your mitts on those, I'll hook you up here shortly. 35192. If you want to text, you can listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio.